kind of know all about the film yeah. to a degree, but tell me a little bit about the film. Yourself. Yeah, so basically the film um, sets to go to the... It aims to uh, take people on a journey from where the root of the Mediterranean diet comes from. And this is in a tiny Italian village in southern Italy where one of the most influential scientists in nutrition who influenced dietary guideline changes in the US and the UK in the 70s and 80s uh, spent most of his time doing his research. And we wanted to find out what were the secrets of this village where people had very low heart disease, very low incidence of cancer, a very high longevity, good quality of life, to see what components, um, what were the kind of clues to how they were living and how does that fit in with the mon modern scientific evidence and data around heart disease, diet, lifestyle. Now for us in Manchester, particularly in Thameside, where obesity will be a, an issue, how are we going to adopt a Mediterranean lifestyle yeah when it rains just about every other day? Yeah, so I think <laughs> it's a very good question. I think what we can do is we can take different components, whether it's diet. I mean, what we need to do, all of us, is not just concentrate on one thing, concentrate on everything. If you get a little bit of everything, it's going to have a big difference to your health. So that's the right kind of dietary things, which involves, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be expensive. Just getting, you know, um, vegetables every day um, and avoiding some of the processed stuff, really. Really avoiding the kind of processed, the, the high sugar stuff, the sugary drinks. You actually save money if you, if you cut out sugary drinks from your diet and just drink water. I mean, you'll probably save quite a lot of money already on that. Um, and then it's things like just simple, you don't even have to join a gym. You know, you can get all all of the health benefits of exercise just from walking if you can for 30 minutes three or four times a week and if you can manage that briskly you're going to be doing a lot of good for your health you don't have to be burning counting calories burning calories on a treadmill all that's nonsense it's exercising for health not weight loss then you've got to add in things that you know there's no doubt that environment plays a big role and you know i argue that government has to help people especially people from um, sort of poorer communities to help make their default choice a healthy choice so when you go to areas where uh, there seems to be more socio-economic deprivation there also seems to be more um, fast food on site um, cheap takeaways all that kind of stuff so we want to help um, subsidize healthier foods and really make those foods less available to give more healthy choices to people. So that the only governments can get involved and local authorities can, can do something about that. And then it's about just the simple stuff, getting families eating together, you know, going back to traditional, you know, the, what happened to the British lunch hour? You know, those, the, the social interaction, uh, Nigel, is so important for health. We've forgotten about that. It's a really big aspect to um, improving one's uh, mental and physical state and you know uh, you know taking the dog people who take dogs for you know men who have dogs actually have less cardiovascular disease than men that don't because actually it's going out and walking but actually it's all even the the, the emotional benefits of having pets that we have to think very differently about lifestyle and also on top of all this um, it's not going to be solved with pills what we've realized and I say this is a practicing cardiologist many of the medications that we prescribe have really marginal benefits at best come with side effects and are nowhere near as impactful as like, simple life style changes which can have an impact very quickly on your life it's never too late yeah. obviously got to get myself a dog um, <laughs> in terms of um, the actual film itself yeah. this is the first well, it's premiering now here in the northwest in Manchester yeah. really tell us a little bit first of all where the film started off yeah. and, and who so, you're because you're, you're inviting special audiences to, to yeah. see it first yeah. not yeah. really for the public is it yeah, yeah. so we, we made this documentary through crowdfunding so it was actually funded by the public uh, for, funded by the public for the public to keep it free of commercial influence so there was no you know, branding opportunities for any companies, that kind of thing to try and cut through um, really to make the, the science look as independent as possible because one of the problems we have is that there are a lot of vested interests that have actually de uh, actually um, influenced the narrative over many years in, in a negative way and it's having an impact on people's health so we wanted to make it so we crowdfunded it and we raised money within f a few weeks on social media through something called Kickstarter and we got the, the funding for it and then uh, we made the film in about a year in terms of the actual filming was the overall film was about four weeks but then obviously post-production etc and then the aim was to then influence policymakers and help individuals so it's available online and people can download it for equivalent of three pounds you know if they want on the bigfatfix.com but um, we want to influence policymakers as well so 
um, what we did was we aimed and we were quite for, we, you know, it was great that we got the Premier in British Parliament, so MPs, it was initially hosted by Keith Fans, and then the European Parliamentary Screening, uh, we plan to take it around the world. It's had, it's had pick-up on BBC World News, on Sky News, it's had good coverage in the media and mainstream media as well. So it's get, the message is getting out there, and obviously one of the messages is don't fear fat, because people have feared fat, and actually that's had an adverse effect on their health. And one, what the, that, the film, it comes out in the film how, that, how that's actually occurred, because we've now had more intake of sugar. Sugar is really the major issue. Okay, and the film shown in, in New York and America? Yes, it's been shown in New York uh, as well, and um, you know, uh, and it was covered by the New York Times. So we had, you know, that got that's obviously got a lot of um, uh, a lot of pickup and coverage, and it's having an impact, having a ripple effect. Um, and I plan to take it around the world. So uh, I plan to take it um, to Australia, to, to developing countries, to India. Um, and you know, over the next few months, we will have screenings. There's another screening in Seattle, in America as well. Um, really, just to try and influence the influencers, if you like, to get the policymakers. So, you know, getting those people. And obviously, in Manchester today, we've got um, what who will probably be the future, hopefully, the future mayor of Manchester, um, former health secretary um, Andy Burnham as well, who's who's watched the film and he's going to be introducing it, which is great. So, you know, it's uh, these are the people that can really introduce policy changes, which is really what's going to help everyone in the population to improve their health quite quickly. For somebody like you who's released a film like this though, how difficult is it to get into a mainstream cinema like this, like View Cinemas here? <laughs> uh, I'm short time, but I mean it's Friday evening, yeah. it's a popular time, how well, difficult is it to organise well, that? Well, you know, actually to be honest, I've been quite fortunate because of, uh, of um, friends of mine that have, have helped out and who've seen the film and wanted to, so, um, you know, both my father and J.S. Bamera, um, who's chair of uh, North Manchester Cent uh, Mental Health Trust as well, he He's the one that he saw in the British Parliament and, and was very keen that we bring it to Manchester. Actually, Manchester's my home. You know, this is my where I grew up. And um, I wanted to also, you know, have a screening, not just for um, health leaders here, and, and, and uh, but also for family and friends as well. And, you know, that's what we wanted to do as well. So there's a little bit of a kind of, how should I put it, more of a... Um, uh, for me, a more of a personal interest in, in screening in Manchester more than anywhere else. OK, and finally... Um, what sort of feedback is the is the film ga gathering as it goes it's, around? It's, get, it's getting very good feedback, actually. So we had many many leading doctors who backed it from both the UK and abroad. Uh, very well reputed international scientists. Um, uh, the guru of medicine who who wrote the medical textbook that I used in my medical finals, Professor Parveen Kumar. Uh, the president of the British Medical Association, they've all given, you know, given it a real you know, thumbs up, if you like, as everybody should watch this film. So that's really, it's, it's pleased me because individuals who have watched it who are not doctors have liked it, and also doctors and medical profession are embracing it. And for me, that, that's, you know, that's, um, uh, I think that's fantastic. You know, with everybody seems to, uh, who have seen it so far, feels that it's uh, had, a, had an impact. Will there be a sequel? Um, don't know. I, I mean, I, I obviously, yeah, possibly. But I mean, I'm going to, you know, carry on campaigning um, and try and really, you know, my, my aim, my mission is to improve population health. Uh, I think we can do it within a few years so that we start hearing that people's, the obesity uh, prevalence is going down, type 2 diabetes is getting, going down. And ultimately, Nigel, this isn't just about health, it's about happiness, it's about people's quality of life. And it's all linked together. So if people can improve their health, they're also going to be happier. And they're also going to be more productive economically. You know, I'm a doctor, I care about people's health, but also this will be better for the economy as well.